Okay, so here we have Pastor Gary Simons, who's one time pastor of a mega church with a congregation of thousands, sharing some scriptures which I don't remember ever hearing in a Christian church, and it's probable that you haven't either. We're going to see his conclusion of a message of his entitled A Tale of Two Interpretations, which focuses on John chapter 8 and the instance um, of a woman caught in adultery being brought to Yeshua, Jesus, to see what he would do. I'll leave a link in the description to the full message so you can watch it in its entirety. OK, let's get on with it. Now, he doesn't say that to everybody because not everybody has made money their idol. And some people think they can't follow Yeshua unless they sell everything and don't have anything. But he said it to the rich young ruler because the ruler had made money his Elohim, his deity. So he said, get rid of your false deity and come follow me in the ways of my father. Amen. So he taught obedience to the commandments. If you love me, you shall guard my commandments. That's John 14, 15. He was simply quoting the Torah on that. John 14, 21, Yeshua said, He who possesses my commands and guards them, obeys them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. So love to the Father equals obedience. If you say you love the Father but you don't obey him, the Scripture says you're a liar and the truth's not in you. And then John chapter 14, verse 23, Yeshua answered him, If anyone loves me, he shall guard or obey my word, and my Father shall love him, and we shall come to him and make our stay with him. All that happens through obedience. He who does not love me does not guard or obey my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but of the Father who sent me. Yeshua is saying, I didn't come to say anything new. I didn't come to say anything of my own accord. He said, the words that I speak are not my own. They are the words of the one who sent me. Isn't that right? Yeshua did not add anything new to the Torah. That would be Torah disobedience if he did that. Deuteronomy 4, 2, do not add to the word which I command you. Do not take away from it so as to guard the commands of Yah, your Elohim, which I am commanding you. And so the question is, do you think Yeshua broke this command by adding to the Torah something new? Or do you think he broke this command by abolishing the Torah? Of course not. If he was Torah disobedient, that would make him what? A sinner. Now, how many of you want Yeshua to be a sinner? All right, if you make Yeshua out to be a sinner, he doesn't qualify to be your Savior. To be your Savior, he must be Torah obedient, perfectly Torah obedient. Amen? And so you know what he said in Matthew 5, 17. Do not think that I came to destroy the Torah of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to complete, to fill it up. For truly I say to you, till the heaven and the earth pass away, one yod or one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done or accomplished. Well, the heaven and the earth, is, they're still here. Those are witnesses to the Torah. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so. What commands? He's talking about the Torah and the prophets. Did he suddenly leave context here? Is now is he talking about just two commands that we read about in the Breed Halashah in the, quote, New Testament? Or is he still talking about the commands of his father? He's still talking about the commands of Torah and we know the prophets were in line with the commands of the Torah. So that's these commands. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. And so Yeshua always taught and teaches the commandments. Now quickly, we have the two, the ten, and the total. This is to help those of you that have never heard this before and those that are watching by video all over the world. Yeshua summed up all of the, the ten by saying there are two, and that is love Elohim and love people. But you don't know how to love Elohim 
and love people unless you read the 10. And the 10 will tell you how to love Elohim and love people. There are four love Elohim commandments and six love people commandments. Now all of the other Torah commandments are summed up in the 10. And the reality is when Yeshua taught, he said those of you who obey these commandments and teach others to obey these commandments, which commandments? Which commandments is he talking about here? He's talking about the Torah and the prophets. Isn't that the context? And the prophets line up with the Torah. He said, you'll be great in the kingdom. If you disobey them and teach others to disobey them, you'll be least in the kingdom. That's serious stuff. And then quickly, we'll go through just a few verses that tell us that Yeshua taught the standard for judgment is what we do, not what we say we believe. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, For the son of Adam is going to come in the esteem of his father with his messengers, and then he shall reward each according to his what? Works. He's quoting Psalm 62, 12, and Proverbs 24, 12. Now, I'm just sticking with what Yeshua said. You know, I taught before all of the things that, that Shaul or the Apostle Paul said about the standard for judgment and the things that Yaakov and and uh, Shimon Kepha, all of the uh, emissaries, the apostles said about the standard for judgment. The Bible teaches that the standard for judgment is what you do, not what you say you believe. John chapter 5, verse 28, Do not marvel at this, because the hour is coming in which all those in the tomb shall hear his voice, the Messiah's voice, and shall come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have practiced evil matters to a resurrection of judgment. Notice the words done and practiced. doesn't say anything about what you say you believe. Because what you believe is proven by what you do. I don't really care what you say about what you believe. I can tell you what you believe by looking at your life. I mean, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for the world out there to have so many people who say they believe in Jesus, but they don't live according to the scripture. What are we to believe? Are we to believe it's not important to obey the scripture? Well, if we have the wrong perspective and context in John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, then we could come to that conclusion. Isn't that right? Two more verses, Revelation chapter 20, starting with verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him who was sitting on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged from what was written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Sheol gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged. How were they judged? Each one according to his works. That's in your, quote, New Testament. And then finally, Revelation 22, starting with verse 12. And see, I am coming speedily, and my reward is with me to give to each one according to what he says he believes. Is that what it says? Is it all right for me to tell you to stop listening to what people say they believe? You will know them by their fruit. Okay? People talk a lot and say a lot of things. All right, judge them by their fruit, not by what they say. If what they do doesn't match what they say, they're hypocrites. Don't follow them. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many that are on that path. All right, narrow and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find that path. Welcome to the few. Amen. And we are searching it out every day. Because we're lovers of truth more than lovers of tradition. Religion will not get us there. Only Yeshua, the one who made it, can get us there. Can you say amen? All right. Again, Revelation 22, verse 12. And see, I'm coming speedily, and my reward is with me to give to each one according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Tall, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those doing what? 
his commands so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city. But outside are the dogs and those who enchant with drugs and those who whore and the murderers and the idolaters and all who love and do falsehood. And by the way, there's a commandment against all of that. He's just not drawing things out of thin air. He's saying those who disobey the commandments aren't going to make it into the city. And they're not going to eat from the tree of life. But those of us who put our actions where our mouth is, amen, and we actually do what we say we believe, we obey the commandments, then by obedience we are postured. To be able to enter the city and eat of the tree of life. Amen. So when you have the Hebraic Torah perspective. When you understand Torah and you are trying to make sense of what Yeshua teaches. It all comes together. It all makes perfect sense. And you don't have to make excuses for the Bible. That's what I love about the truth that we're walking in is that the Bible is one continuous agreeing revelation. When you know that, you don't put what's called the Old Testament at war with what's called the New Testament. You don't say the Old Testament is law. It's that mean, ugly, grotesque, bloodthirsty thing that wants evil for you. But fortunately, Yeshua came along and he didn't live by that. Or maybe he obeyed it just so that he could then abolish it for us. So then we don't have to obey it. How great would that be, right? And you set people free from the Torah or the instructions of Elohim. Do you think if you liberate people from the Torah of Elohim, it's going to produce a righteous world? When you look around the planet today and you see all the wickedness and the unrighteousness, do you think it's because the Almighty, you think Yeshua, it's because Yeshua liberated us from the Torah of Elohim that, uh, that people are living so rightly? No, they're not living rightly. And in the day that we're living in, what is the Spirit doing? He's restoring things. He's restoring truth to the body of Messiah. And I'm glad that we're a part of that. Can you say amen? amen? That we have come back to the Hebraic context of the scripture. And that we see Torah as the foundation for all scripture. And without understanding Torah, we cannot even interpret scripture correctly. Amen? And so is the tale of two interpretations. Hallelujah.